doctor. It's former MC Donald here. I had a lamb born this morning with long spider-like legs and it isn't doing well. It's the second one this week. When you have a second, could you call me back so I can figure out what's going on? Thanks. Maybe I'll watch some TV to get my mind off my lamb troubles. Maybe I'll catch the news. top stories. Next story we'll be covering is of a tragic condition which affects young lambs and leads to their premature demise. Due to this poor prognosis, this disease raises economic and welfare conditions within the lambing community. Hereditary chondrodysplasia, or as is more commonly known, spider lamb syndrome, is a genetic disease which affects the muscles, muscular and skeletal systems of lambs. This evening, we'll investigate how this disease directly affects producers and how they can reduce the incidence on their farms. We'll also take a look at the genetic defect behind the condition's development. First off, we'll hand the reins over to our reporter, Lisa Scott, who is on location with Farmer Brown. They will be discussing the problems that arise with the birth of these lambs and how farmers can go about protecting their flock. Over to you, Lisa. Thank you, Jocelyn. It's Lisa here with Channel 7 News. Spider lamb syndrome primarily affects breeds such as Suffolk and Hampshire. Those are commonly identified by their black faces. However, recent studies have shown that Oxfords, Southdowns, and Shropshires have also recently been affected. <laughs> the disease is characterized by a number of skeletal malformations, including what it's named after, long, spider-like, bowed limbs. Additional characteristics include muscular atrophy, scoliosis, malformed ribs and sternebrae, a Roman nose, shortened maxilla, and deviated nasal septum. I'm sitting here at Farmer Brown's farm with Mr. Brown himself. His sheep were recently affected with Spiderland syndrome. Tell me, how long have you been involved in sheep farming? Well, I took over the farm from my father. And I've been lambing for 65 years. Wow, that's a long time. Have you ever seen anything like this? Not at all. Not in my 65 years of lambing. But I've only ever had the Katahdins. I just recently got the black face stuff up three years ago. And please describe how you knew your sheep were affected. Well, last month, late one night, I had a lamb born, and it was very unusual looking. Please describe how you knew your sheep were affected. Well, its legs are all nimbly bimbly like, and long bowed legs, and its spine was kind of crooked, and it had trouble walking and moving, you know. And what did you do when you noticed this? Well, at first I googled it on my Blackberry, and then the next day I called my vet, and that's when I learned about spider lamb syndrome. What happened to your lamb? Well, I talked it over with the vet, and we decided there's nothing we can do. So we had to put it down. Its quality of life and welfare would have been affected and would have only lived one month. Aww. How did that impact you personally? Well, Lisa, I lost a good lamb. Also, I had to have my flock genetically tested, which was very expensive. Turns out my only ram and the sheep's mother were carriers. So what does that mean? Did you have to get rid of the carrier sheep? Well, yes, I did, or else we'd have a chance of having more lambs affected by SLS. So then I had to call more producers in the area because we all share the same ram. Just, about, just the other day, my friend Bob, his lamb was affected by spider lamb syndrome and had to have it euthanized. As you can see, Jocelyn, spider lamb syndrome has significant impact on the Ennismore sheep farming community. This is Lisa Scott reporting for Channel 10 News. Back to you. Thanks for that compelling report, Lisa. It certainly shows what a huge toll Spiderland syndrome can have on a farm and the importance of implementing a good breeding program. Now we move on to discuss the genetic basis behind this debilitating disease. To give us some insight on the cause and development of Spiderland syndrome, we have special guest, animal geneticist Dr. Phillips. Thanks for speaking with us this evening, Doctor. Thanks, Jocelyn. So all these physical signs of Spiderland syndrome, what is causing this? To find out, we have to look at what's different about these spider lambs in comparison to normal lambs. And I'm not just talking about those funny looking legs. We have to get down to my favorite. 
the genetic level. So some dedicated scientists with way too much time on their hands were able to map the genes in a sheep's chromosome, and they found something strange going on in one of the spider lamb's chromosomes. On the end of chromosome 6, one gene in particular, the FGFR3 gene, was a little different in spider lambs than in normal lambs. This difference was actually a change in the DNA sequence at position 1719, a T base pair that had been changed to an A. This type of change is called the transversion mutation and would, have, and would have occurred during the replication of the DNA. Now it turns out this little difference in the DNA has a big effect on the development of the lamb because FGFR3 is an essential gene that acts as a controller of many aspects of a lamb's development. One of the most important areas it affects is bone growth. A normal FGFR3 is a special type of receptor that controls the growth of long bones by stopping them from growing too much. If FGFR3 isn't working, the bones continue to grow even when they shouldn't, and this is a big cause for most of the physical abnormality seen in spider lambs. It's commonly believed that a lamb has to receive a chromosome 6 with this non-functioning FGFR3 gene, seen in red, from both its mother and father in order to show the spider lamb syndrome. This means the trait follows what is called an autosomal recessive pattern of inheritance. So that's why it's important not to breed two heterozygous sheep together. However, there are always more studies being done in this area, so keep your eye out for that exciting research. Yes, I'm sure that will be very exciting indeed. Thanks again to Dr. Phillips and her expert knowledge on the genetic development of the disease. To finish off our investigative report on spider lamb syndrome, we have Dr. Plant, a veterinarian from the Ontario Veterinary College, in the studio to discuss the diagnostic process. Thanks for being here today, Dr. Plant, and how are you? I'm doing very well. I'm happy to be here. Very good. Well, as we have heard throughout the program, spider lamb syndrome has some very distinctive physical characteristics that make it easy to identify. But what we haven't touched on is what are other ways and tools that veterinarians use to confirm a diagnosis of SLS. Would you be able to shed any light on this subject? Why, yes, I can. The physical signs of the disease are definitely the primary indication of spider lamb syndrome. However, there are other tools that are used to confirm this diagnosis. First off, radiographs of spider lambs show thickened growth plates in the long bones, as well as areas of inappropriate bone development in the elbow, as can be seen on this x-ray. A histological evaluation of vertebrae and long bones shows larger than normal areas of bone growth in the bones of the limbs, these are two good indicators of spider lamb syndrome and aid in making the correct diagnosis. Those methods certainly sound reliable, but is there anything that can be done, like a blood test or something, that would 100% confirm a diagnosis of spider lamb syndrome? You know, Jocelyn, that's a great question. Because geneticists have been able to isolate the spider lamb gene onto a specific locus on chromosome 6, there is a genetic test that can be done using polymerase chain reaction restriction fragment length polymorphism which is basically isolating and amplifying the area of the gene of interest. Treatment with restrictions enzymes can show whether or not the lamb is a carrier of the mutation. This test is a recommendation to producers who have had an instance of spider lamb syndrome in their flock in order to eliminate any carriers in the breeding population. Hmm. That is very interesting and hopefully that has been a help to some of our local producers out there. Thanks again for being with us here today, Doctor. That will conclude Channel 9's investigation on the genetic condition known as Spiderland Syndrome. If you'd like to find out any more information, please check our website. Stay tuned. After this quick commercial break, we'll be investigating the controversial issue of using microscopes or virtual resources in the study of histology. Hi, it's Meg here with LambWow. It's like a genetic test that can be used to identify animals as carriers and to confirm a diagnosis of Spiderland Syndrome. LAMWA is a polymerase chain reaction restriction fragment length polymorphism assay. Are you following me, camera guy? Performing the genetic test is so simple. It's like one, two, three. You know, life's hard enough as it is. First, you need to take a sample of blood, or a sample of other tissue, you know, like spinal fluid or something, and if you spill it, you can use some ShamWow to clean it up. Then, we want to use PCR to amplify the region of interest, which in this case is the polymorphic region gene of the FGFR3 gene. You're gonna love my genes. The polymorphism in this gene involves a substitution for an A for a T. After PCR, we digest the product with a restriction enzyme. Then, we use a gel, the gel is treated, and we use a UV light to visualize. 
you know, we're going to reduce Spiderland syndrome in the population one lambo test at a time. You're going to spend $100 plus a month keeping your sheep healthy anyways. You're throwing your money away. This lasts one month. This lasts 20 months. I don't know, it sells itself. Lambo sells for $59.99.95, but if you call right now, you'll get a brand new light microscope for $150 free. That's right, free. You'll probably never use it, but it'll make you the life of the party. Call within the next 20 minutes, because we can't be doing this all day. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-526-2909. Call right now to guarantee your free light microscope. That's 1-800-526-2909. We take Visa, Amex, MasterCard, or even your firstborn child. Call now. Hello, first years. Look at your lamb. Now back to me. Now back at your lamb. Now back to me. Sadly, he isn't me. But if you stopped messing around and started using genetic testing, he could be handsome like me. Look down. Back up. Where are you? You're on a farm. Who are you with? Back to me. Check it out. It's little Bo Peep. Look again. Bo Peep is now Mary. Anything is possible when your sheep looks like a sheep and not a spider. I'm on a horse. here, the animal genetics researchers. Because of their important discoveries, my business and the business of other sheep producers is saved. Because of them, I think everything's going to be all right. With my swagger, hop in there with yo, I got places to go People to see time is precious, I look at my car, yeah, out of control Just like my mind where I'm going, the women, the shorties, know nothing my clothes No stopping at my Pirelli's on, unlike my Dewey, that's always on I know the storm is coming, my pockets keep telling me it's gonna shower Call up my homies, it's on and popping the night cause it's meant to be ours We keep a fadeaway shot cause we ballin' this partner, Patron, be power Look, mama, owl, you just like the flowers, girl, you the truth with all that goody power Speechless. 